So let's take a look at how the algorithm is actually built. Shor's algorithm. <laughs> Shor. <laughs> Welcome back to Coding with Kiskit. I'm your host, Jin. If this is your first time joining us, check out our previous episodes where each week we talked about quantum algorithms and be sure to like and subscribe. In this final episode, we'll be talking about encryption and implementing one of the most famous algorithms in the field, Shor's algorithm. Shor's algorithm is the premier example of a quantum algorithm that shows the power of quantum computation compared to classical computation today. This is because Shor's algorithm provides a nearly exponential speedup over the fastest known classical algorithm in finding prime factors of large numbers. But why is this so pertinent? Finding factors for large numbers is the basis of RSA encryption, which is a public key sharing scheme used for secure data transactions, like credit card transactions. Under RSA encryption, messages can be encrypted with a code called a public key, which can be shared openly. Once a message has been encrypted with the public key, which is a very large number, it can only be decrypted by a private key, which is the prime factor of that large number. The larger the number, the more computational power it takes to find a prime factor, and the more secure the encryption is. So the security of RSA relies on the fact that finding a prime factor of a large number takes an extremely long amount of time. To give you an idea of how long this would take, let's take the example of a 232 decimal digit semi-prime number. A semi-prime number is just the product of two prime numbers and is the hardest type of number to factorize. To factorize this number, you need roughly a thousand years of processing time on a typical laptop. Quantum computers running Shor's algorithm could one day shorten this wait significantly, but quantum processors today are far from being able to do this. So you don't need to worry about your credit card transactions anytime soon. In this episode, we'll focus on how to implement Shor's algorithm in Qiskit, but if you want to learn more about the theory of Shor's algorithm, check out the links in the description below. So let's actually implement Shor's algorithm now in Qiskit. All right, so first as always, I'm gonna activate my Qiskit environment, going with Qiskit. This is where I have Qiskit installed. I'm gonna open up a Jupyter Notebook. Open up a new Python 3 notebook. All right, so the easiest way to run Shor's algorithm is to use the Shor class in Aqua. So from Qiskit, Aqua, algorithms. I'm going to import short. I'm going to also import quantum instance from Aqua. And this is going to run my experiment. Import numpy. And let me also import quantum circuit. Air and execute. These are all the things that will run my experiment. And from Qiskit, tools, visualization, import plot histogram. So I can look at my results. Oops, import. Okay, so let me set my backend to the chasm simulator. I'm going to set up my quantum instance to run my experiment. Plug in my backend, say shots is 1000. Let's set up my Shor's algorithm. And so for this example, I'm going to factorize the number 15, n is equal to 15. This is just a really simple example just to show you what's going on. I'm gonna talk about what this a number is in a little bit. All right. Now let's run this. All right, so my simple Shor's algorithm has factored 15 into three and five. So that was easy, but let's unpack what this class is actually doing. Let's take a look at how the algorithm is actually built. Shor's algorithm can be broken up into three parts. Number one, we can convert the factoring problem into a period finding problem using what's called the modular exponentiation function. 
What this boils down to is dividing our number by a guess number a and computing the remainder. For good guesses of a, this function is periodic as we increase the power of a. The second part finds the period of the modular exponentiation function using the quantum Fourier transform, and this is responsible for the quantum speedup of this algorithm. And finally, number three, once we've found the period of our modular exponentiation function, we can use this number to efficiently compute the factors of our original number using the following magic formula. So remember, a is our guess number, and r is the period of our modular exponentiation function. And these are our two magic numbers. p is equal to a to the r over 2 minus 1, and q is equal to a to the r over 2 plus 1. And n is our number that we're trying to factor. So these two magic numbers, p and q, are not necessarily the factors of n that we're looking for, but with high probability, they'll have cofactors with n, which we can compute efficiently. And if our magic numbers aren't integers, we can just use another guess for a. So the first thing I'm going to do is code up my modular exponentiation function. And this is hard coded for factorizing 15, and also hard coded for a guess number of 7. Generally, you can construct circuits efficiently for whatever guess you're trying to use. For iteration in range power. And all this circuit involves is doing a few swaps. Uh, one, two, u swap, zero, one. And then for q in range four, do an x gate. Okay, I'm gonna turn this circuit into a gate so we can plug it in to our Schwarz algorithm later. Let me just name this circuit equal to see that. I mod 15. And 15 is once again the number that we're going to be factorizing in power. Okay, uh, control. Okay. So we're going to specify that we have eight qubits that are going to be counting our exponent. And our guess number a is going to be seven. All right, so now I'm going to define my quantum Fourier transform circuit. So my quantum circuit will take n qubits for qubit range and qc swap, swap these qubits around, n minus qubit minus one for j in range n, for m in range j, C to C1 minus NP dot pi, 2 to the J minus M, M, J, and then Hadamard. Equals, we'll call this QFT dagger. Turn QC. Okay. All right, so now let's put everything together in my Schwarz algorithm. So I'm gonna set up a new quantum circuit. And count plus four ancillas. So 
I'm going to initialize my counting qubits into a superposition state. Just do some Hadamards on each qubit. I'm going to initialize my first ancilla in the excited state. I'm just going to flip it with an X, X gate. All right, so now let's add my modular exponentiation function. Append this is my modular exponentiation function. And this is hard coded for a is equal to seven. And there's other circuits for other guesses of a. Q plus i plus n count for i in range four. Okay. And I'm going to do my quantum Fourier transform. Okay, and finally I'm going to measure my circuit. Okay, let's see what this looks like. All right, good. So I've initialized my counting qubits into the superposition state. I'm applying my modular exponentiation function. And then I do my quantum Fourier transform at the end and measure. So now let's actually execute this on one of the simulators. I'm gonna use the chasm simulator. Results equals execute. Execute my circuit, use this backend. Shots, let's say 2048. And get the results out of this. And get the counts back from my experiment. And let's see what this looks like. Beautiful. Okay, so let's look at the states that we get back in this histogram. So this gives us back in binary the phases 0 out of 256, 64 out of 256, 128 over 256, and 192 over 256. So by simplifying these expressions and looking at the denominator, we can get values of the period r of the modular exponentiation function. So this gives us three guesses for r. 1, 2, and 4, just by looking at the denominators of our four phases. So let's look at the value r is equal to 4, and plug it into our magic formula, which remember is p is equal to a to the r over 2 minus 1, and q is equal to a to the r over 2 plus 1. And remember that p and q are not necessarily the factors of our original n is equal to 15, but I claim that they have cofactors with n, which we can find efficiently. So if we plug r into our formulas, p is equal to 7 squared minus 1. a, remember, is equal to 7. This gives us p is equal to 48. And q is equal to 7 squared plus 1. q is equal to 50. So with my magic number q is equal to 50, we see that we have a common factor with our original n equals 15 of 5. And with our magic number p is equal to 48, we have another common factor, which is 3. So there we have it. We found our two factors of 15. 
So now that we built Shores, why don't you try to factor n is equal to 25 using the Shores class? And let us know what you get in the comments below. This is the last episode of this season of Coding with Kiskit. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss next season of Coding with Kiskit, and so you don't miss out on our weekly Kiskit videos. I've been your host, Jin Sun Kim. See you later!